Um, I would like to know whether you uh, have a, a closer understanding of the conflict in Venezuela, which is ongoing, and if yes, uh, whether you could give a yeah, you could give your details about the, the, the tactics, both of the opposition and of the government side. Uh, Venezuela is, is one of the most important world battlefields for democracy now, and uh, it is in a very sad condition. Uh, we have the government, uh, which a guy called Maduro inherited from a guy called Chavez, the restless campaigner, and uh, which basically crumbled down economically, politically. Now we are having the government which has no legitimacy at all. In fact, they lost uh, by a landslide parliamentary elections a year and a half ago, but kind of buys time and uses the pillars of force to maintain in power with no legitimacy. Their key pillar is judiciary. So they're using constitutional court, actually the constitutional court stripped the parliament of its in charges because obviously the president and the ruling party, still ruling party, cannot control uh, the parliament. Uh, this escalated the crisis in April this year and uh, there were like uh, four months of everyday protests, which is of course tactic I would never advise. And I think uh, the main mistake of the opposition is sticking to the street tactics over and over because they're facing the government uh, that is not even using the standard repressive mechanisms. Majority of violence is made by a paramilitary group called colectivos that are armed by the government and sent to kill protesters and basically the youth gangs. And uh, what happens there is that now Maduro found another way to buy time with inventing the Constitutional Assembly, another super organ with no legitimacy that will strip the parliament from in charges. But what he's basically, basically afraid is elections. And he wants to delay these elections because in free and fair elections, his numbers are under 20%. And, and he knows that. So uh, I don't think Maduro will last long. Uh, I'm more concerned in how many people will suffer till the change happens. Venezuela is one of the countries with the largest hyperinflation rate uh, not only this year, but now getting into the decade, uh, majority of the population doesn't have the basic goods in terms of foods or toilet paper. Average Venezuelan lost eight pounds or four kilos in the last year. So it's really, it's not only political crisis, but it's economical crisis on the top, uh, uh, political crisis on the top of the economical crisis. So even if there, there will be figure out a way uh, for smooth transition of power, which I highly doubt, uh, I don't think Maduro is the guy who is going to retire. I think it's more and more uh, drug-controlled government. And, and recently the, the United States seized the assets of the Venezuelan vice president, uh, which are counting in hundreds of millions. And this is not the money you can really earn from you know, selling, uh, selling uh, uh, M&M chocolates. Uh, so what's really interesting is that uh, I'm very hopeful about the change in Venezuela in terms that it will happen. I'm, I'm very, very concerned on how to fix and put this country together. It's economically destroyed. It's on the brink of complete poverty. It has unsustainable industry, which is set by Chavez on the oil price. Their main revenue is oil. Oil should be $80 plus for this economy to be stable. Oil is not going to be $80 anytime soon. It's around 50 now for barrel. And uh, I think resetting the economy and also healing the wounds uh, within conflicted part of the society after Maduro goes would be more difficult than envisioning the day when Maduro goes. And, and uh, I, I, I used to work with student groups there in, uh, in 2006 before the first referendum Chavez lost in 2007. Uh, then with very, very different opposition players from across the spectrum. Uh, the unity is one of the big things. It's a highly politically fragmented society. You have 19 opposition parties that hardly speak to each other, and then you have the ruling party that speaks to none of the opposition parties. So it's like a, it's a big political fragmentation. So uh, finding the unity to push through transition is going to be equally, if not more, difficult than, than ending with Maduro's era.